Hey friends, one question that I often get is, how do you fly in a plane with a guitar? Uh, people think maybe you can't do it, think if you do it, it's cost prohibitive, or your guitar is gonna get broken. Um, well, uh, I've flown on planes with lots of different instruments, and uh, in fact, this last weekend, I flew to play a friend's wedding, and uh, I documented the experience. So in this video, I'm gonna share my experience and give you my tips for how to safely fly with a guitar. So the first thing I wanna say is that this video actually applies to all instruments that are guitar-like in size or smaller. The other quick thing to mention is that these tips might apply differently depending on where you live. I fly mostly in the US, and so I'm familiar with many airlines here, uh, but I've also flown in other countries. Um, today I'm gonna to speak mostly about American uh, airlines, but regardless, I think you'll find these tips useful. So I'm gonna start by sharing my story of how I flew this last weekend with my guitar. So I was flying with Alaska Airlines for the first time, and since I wasn't familiar with them, the first thing I did is I went to their website and I looked at their instrument protocol. Every airline is going to have a portion of the website where they explain what their policy is for how to deal with musical instruments. In my experience in the US, most airlines have a pretty similar policy. And basically what that policy says is that you can indeed put a musical instrument in the overhead compartments uh, with most airlines, uh, as long as there is room for the instrument. And you might think, no, 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 they're very specific on the measurements that has to fit in the size of a carry-on bag. But actually, all the airlines that I've flown with in the US say the same thing, is that for musical instruments like guitars, um, those measurements don't apply. So actually, uh, as long as the instrument is about the size of a guitar or less, you can put it in the overhead and you'll be fine. Unfortunately, even flight attendants on an airplane might not know their own policy. <laughs> and you might be turned away at the gate or maybe you have a flight attendant in a bad mood. So I recommend printing out or having on your phone uh, their policy and you can even show them and that should get you through if you run into a problem. So I show up at the airport, I have my guitar ready, you put it through security like normal. So my guitar got through security just fine, no one even opened it up, there were no questions about it. The next step is getting to your gate and figuring out how you're gonna get the guitar on the plane. If you get on the plane late, if you buy a ticket and you're in group five or six and you're the last one on the plane, your instrument probably won't fit and then they're going to gate check it. Personally, what I've learned from experience is that I like to show up a bit early and make friends with the person at the gate. Often they're very stressed, but if you're there before people start piling up around them, you can say, hi, uh, I'm a musician. I have a really nice guitar with me uh, and I would like to pre-board uh, to make sure that my instrument goes in the overhead. And I read that your policy says I can carry on my musical instrument as long as there's space. So I would love to pre-board, that would really help me out. And although airlines don't tell you this, and often they make you pay for this, sometimes I've just paid, I've learned through experience that you can almost always ask, can I please pre-board with a smile? And every time that I've ever asked, uh, they said yes. So at this point, you'll board and you'll get through no problem, walk down the whole you know, runway all the way to the plane. But now you have the big challenge and probably the most stressful part of the whole experience. You have to actually put your guitar now somewhere that's going to be safe. And you have two options at this point. The first and normally the best option is to make friends with the people when you walk on the plane and kindly ask to put your guitar in the closet, which is usually right where you enter on the plane. So when I did that, uh, they said, sure, of course, and they seemed a bit surprised. I think maybe no one's ever asked them <laughs> that question before. So they moved their personal belongings a little bit and they, they let me put the guitar right in there and they actually they were super nice about it. At the end of the flight, they even got it out in advance and they were waiting for me to hand me my guitar. So they were super polite. So if you get on the plane and even if the overhead is full, you can always ask about the closet. The second option is to simply walk on the plane as normal. Don't make a scene with your guitar. Don't say, hey, I'm bringing a guitar. Just walk straight to your seat. And assuming you're able to pre-board or buy priority access, there should be all of the bins sitting there open uh, waiting. And so just simply pop your guitar uh, in a convenient bin. It's worth noting at this point that different airlines have different size overhead bins. And for sure, I've flown small planes where the bins are barely big enough for two uh, carry-on bags. So smaller planes might not have enough 
room to carry a full-size guitar actually in the overhead. In this case, you can still try the closet, but it's really risky. So look ahead to find out which type of plane you're flying on, and you can even sometimes find the measurements of the overhead compartments. If you want, just call the airline and they can usually tell you. So as you can tell, I had a pretty easy experience, and this is reflective of most of my time uh, traveling. But of course, you can run into some problems. So what happens, for example, if you cannot pre-board, or you're in group six and you simply can't get on early and all the overhead bins are full and you have your precious guitar? Well, in this instance, they will gate check your instrument. And what that means is they will uh, personally give it to someone and they will take it down to the plane and put it down there. They usually put like an orange tag or something on it to identify it. And then when you leave the plane, it'll be waiting right there with like the strollers and wheelchairs. This is actually not terrible because it means that it's carried down at the last minute and brought right back up at the end. Uh, it's still not humidity controlled down there. The temperatures are, are who knows what, <laughs> uh, probably not great for an instrument. And it's still kind of thrown around by some who knows, you know, random guys. So obviously it's still a bit scary and I try to go for options one or two. In fact, I've never had to gate check an instrument. So that should say something. Then of course, another option is to actually check your instrument. So when you show up at the very beginning to check in, you can check it just like you would a large bag. Personally, I think this is the absolute worst option. What this means is way before some labyrinth of tunnels <laughs> at checkout all the way to your plane, they put it on a conveyor belt and then it's just dropped and dropped and turned and dropped and then carried and thrown again and again and again. And it, I've seen some videos where they simply just drop a couple feet. It looks terrible. And I think this is where uh, all the bad stuff seems to happen. I do have a lot of colleagues who have horror stories about checking instruments and opening it at the other end to find the whole thing is looks looks awful. Now there is one more option, but it is the most expensive option. <laughs> you can buy a seat for your instrument. Uh, I've done this a lot. Luckily, most of the time I'm being flown out to play with a company and they pay for the seat, but sometimes I'm bringing back an instrument from Europe and I have to simply pay for it. When I have bought a seat myself, it's usually just because the instrument won't fit in the overhead or I'm flying in Europe on like a cheap airline like Ryanair where for sure they're not going to let you get away with anything. There is no putting it in the closet, the bins are too small, you simply buy a seat. But in those instances the flights are usually a bit cheaper. Uh, like I did a flight from I think Spain to the UK and it was pretty cheap and I simply just bought a bought a seat for it. And unfortunately, having your guitar in a seat doesn't get you an extra meal or drink. <laughs> now, before we call this video an end, I have a couple other miscellaneous tips you could use for flying. The first thing is to consider what type of case you're using. I probably wouldn't use a gig bag, like a really simple cloth bag. I think the more rigid the case, the better. So if you have a hard wooden case, obviously that's the best. I actually flew this time a little risky. I was using a semi-rigid case, very lightweight with backpack straps, easy to carry through the airport, uh, much nicer for me, and I was confident I can get in the overhead. But generally, if you do have to gate check it, you're gonna want it to be as strong as possible. The other thing you really must do when you fly, I think, is you should detune all the strings all the way down, and usually I do it until they kind of don't really have a, a pitch anymore. So something like this, where the string is just totally floppy, uh, that's, that's good, I do all the strings like that. The main point is you want to take off the tension from the instrument because the strings are pulling this way in the, on the bridge and if your guitar was dropped, if it had to be gate checked or if you drop it coming out of the overhead or whatever, the impact is worse for the instrument if there's all this tension pulling on it. Usually the bridge can rip off or the, the headstock can break here. I had a friend where their headstock broke right here in half and they were able to get it repaired but let's not have this happen to you. So detune the strings before you fly. The other thing I did was I took extra clothes I had, socks, underwear, t-shirts, and I just made sure that all of the negative space in the case was filled. You can do this with bubble wrap if you want, but for me I was actually trying to conserve space in my carry-on, and it was great. I could just kind of put a bunch of clothes uh, packed in there, and uh, it makes it so the guitar doesn't wiggle around and get injured if it was to drop. So this is how I fly with an instrument. Uh, I've used all these tips many times and I've never had an issue. Although I have to tell you, no matter what, when you fly with an instrument, it's stressful. I'm never happy until I'm on the plane with the instrument secure. Uh, maybe not even happy until I get to the destination and open it up and tune it and see it's okay. Uh, it's a stressful thing. You're, you're scared that they might turn you down. Smile, be calm, uh, be very, very, very polite. Uh, and in my experience, it's worked every time. 
So I really hope this video helped you. If you enjoyed it, you could give back very easily by subscribing to my channel for many more guitar tips and educational videos like this one. And if you're enjoying learning about classical guitar and are ready to take it seriously and learn it yourself, uh, I have a new online classical guitar course. It's a six hour course where I teach you everything you need to know to get started in your first pieces. Uh, it's great because you get to learn from the comfort of your own home. You can check it out in the link in the description. And actually this Labor Day weekend, it is $50 off so do get it while you can. I also wanted to quickly mention before you go that my online music school Arpeggianto, a school for all things that go pluck, is hosting a free masterclass September 10th. Head to arpeggianto.com, the link is in the description. For free, you can come on September 10th, join us on Zoom, and get a really great experience learning about guitar from one of our expert instructors. You'll also find on our website a series of replay videos. We've done 10 masterclasses, 10 workshops. It's all sitting there, an hour and a half a piece. Over 30 hours of footage just sitting there waiting to be uh, seen and waiting to help you learn the instrument. So again, head to the link in the description and you'll find all that content online waiting for you. Workshops, masterclasses, and of course, expert teachers who can teach you one-on-one -on -one via Zoom. These are people that I've hired because they are wonderful teachers and a fantastic players and in their instruments. So check out arpeggiato.com to learn more about that, and I will see you guys next time.